This is June 07, a question taken from um, AS2 this time. Most of those other questions were from the medical physics part before, which was AS3A. So this is from paper AS2, and this is a question three. The speed of sound can be determined using a resonance tube of variable length and a number of tuning forks of different frequency. Describe briefly how the apparatus would be used. State the readings to be taken. Show how the results would be processed to obtain a value for the speed of sound in air. They haven't said uh, use a space for a diagram, but they have obviously left a space for a diagram, and that will help. So you're going to have um, a measuring cylinder or some kind of tube. It doesn't have to be a measuring cylinder. But inside it, you're going to have your tube and you're going to have water and I'll colour that in green. And above your tube then you're going to have your tuning fork. So that's the tuning fork there and it's vibrating just above the tube. Okay, um, so you would label that. This is an open glass tube. Um, a tuning fork. I've called that a glass tube, they've actually called it a resonance tube. And then this is a measuring cylinder. Um, containing water. And what you could write, put in there too is you could put in the length between the top of the tube and the bottom of the water, which once you, once you get, or the top of the water, once you get there, that's the length of tube that you're talking about. So we call it L. Um, so use of the apparatus, um, tuning fork, is struck at end of resonance tube. And length of resonance tube adjusted until um, louder sound or loudest sound first position of resonance or which is the first position of resonance is found. Now that means that you might have to move your tube up and down till you're absolutely certain that's the place where you would you find it. Um, so that will get you one mark there. The readings then that you have to get, you have to measure the length of um, resonance tube as shown. Um, <clears throat> And then you would repeat using different tuning forks of known frequency. Now, repeat using different tuning forks of known frequency. How are you going to use this? So I'm just going to draw in here, and hopefully you'll see this, the first position of resonance. And the first position of resonance uh, the shape of the standing wave which is produced is like this and I've just drawn it in there in red or pink actually so hopefully you can see that and you should be able to see if I draw it at the side here that's it drawn there that is that length is equivalent to one quarter of a wavelength so the result processing for each frequency The length of the tube is equal to a quarter of a wavelength. Um, so if we know that, that V is equal to lambda F, but that, that means that lambda is equal to four times the length that you measure each time. So V is equal to, therefore V is equal to four L F. And if we plot a graph, oh sorry, if we rearrange this first, um, and we put F, we're, we're look at, we know, we'll know F and we know L, so we need one of those on the x-axis and one on the y-axis. And so if we rearrange that to have V multiplied by 1 over 4L. 
that's just dividing v by 4l it's the same thing and i write y equals mx underneath that um, then if we plot f versus um, uh, either 1 over 4L or 1 over L, then the gradient of the graph is equal to V over 4, and therefore V is equal to 4 times the gradient. Now it says uh, quality of written communication down here. Um, you have to really show kind of um, uh, equations here to prove that. So what, I've, what I'm suggesting that you plot here is that you plot that on the x-axis, that on the y-axis, and then your v over 4 left, um, and that's going to be the gradient of your graph. And you have to rearrange that then to multiply by 4 to get the speed of sound.